snoring can be just simple snoring with no sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea. Um, however, patients with obstructive sleep apnea always have snoring. So one has to uh, um, be clear that patient, patient who has snoring might not always have sleep apnea. Um, they could just have simple snoring. The diagnosis of sleep apnea usually start from the history. The patient with um, sleep apnea would complain of uh, daytime tiredness and daytime sleepiness. The spouse would complain that the patient snore badly. And also there might be other uh, factors including blocked nose and the, and the snoring and gets a bit worse after drinking. The patient might have very interrupted sleep and they might wake up frequently during the sleep and their quality of sleep is usually very bad. Other um, less common uh, symptoms include, include um, they would be quite irritable during the daytime or they can't concentrate well in their work and they might have some personality changes. When we examine a patient, the patient uh, most likely would be uh, uh, overweight in the uh, case of adults. Um, they would have uh, maybe large tonsils and very long and excessive soft palate. Um, if you examine the nose, they might have a deviated nasal septum and they might have very swollen hypertrophied inferior turbinates. Um, they, when you look at the, the chin, they may have receding chin. Um, intrusion, okay, is completely a different picture. Intrusion with obstructive sleep apnea usually have uh, big tonsils and might have big adenoids as well. In order to confirm the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea, um, a, the gold standard is the sleep study. So patient may be invited to the hospital for sleep or they can sleep in their own home with the monitoring of their sleep using a, a, a sleep uh, monitoring um, device. So during the sleep study, there are a few information we need to collect, okay? They're, whether they have um, breathing air entry, air entry through the nose and mouth. We check their brain wave, we check their eye movement and we also check their body movement and chest movement. The oxygen saturation in the blood will be monitored as well. Of course, the snoring um, is also monitored. And that would be the gold standard that allows us to uh, find out whether the patient has sleep apnea, if they have sleep apnea, what, what type of sleep apnea, whether they are obstructive type due to the blockage in the nose and the uh, upper airway, or a central type, which means the brain do not uh, tell the body to breathe. And also from the same study, we would be able to see how severe is the sleep apnea. Uh, there are a few points to note regarding the treatment of sleep apnea. If the patient is found to have mild sleep apnea, they do not require treatment. And smile sleep apnea do not cause a major impact in their health. If they're found to have moderate or severe sleep apnea, they will require treatment in order to improve their health status. The first treatment a patient a doctor would recommend would be a, a positive uh, airway machine, which is a device that actually blow positive uh, pressure into their airway when they are asleep to splint the airway open to get rid of the blockage in their airway. Hence, they don't get blockage and they got enough air going into their lungs and their circulation. This machine usually works very well, but it requires the patient to wear the uh, device compliantly. Um, it is not invasive and you can always change uh, your mind if you decide that the positive airway machine is not the option of choice. 
the other other methods of dealing with obstructive sleep apnea would be uh, surgery, um, especially in children. Um, children would not wear a CPAP machine, hence surgery would be really the only option. The surgery would involve removing the tonsils and or the adenoids. Once the blockage due to the tonsils and adenoids are removed, the sleep apnea intrusion will be cured. There are other options for adults apart from removing their, their tonsils if their tonsils proven to be big. So the surgery might involve unblocking the nose if they have deviated nasal septum or hypertrophied inferior turbinates. In regarding to their pharynx, um, there are options they can choose to uh, address the soft palate and also the tongue. Um, some patients who have a, a receding chin and the tongue collapses when they uh, go to sleep, they could consider wearing a, a device, a mouth guard, which is a mandibular advancement prosthesis, which helps the tongue to protrude forward when they lay down to go to sleep. Find Doc. Your doctor is here.